Buttons are one of the most powerful tools in Notion. If you want to become more optimized and productive with your Notion experience, we highly recommend you to add these to your workspace. Especially with the latest button update, which allows you to place them as database properties, buttons are incredibly useful. In this video, we'll be doing a deep dive into Notion's buttons, explaining everything you need to know about them, including helpful use cases. If you find this useful, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Let's first go over how to create buttons. So it's very simple to create buttons in Notion. All you have to do is type slash button and click button. So that's the basics of creating a button in Notion. You can name it add task and you can choose an emoji here or an icon. So for example, like this plus sign and done. So of course you have to configure it, but this is the basics of creating a button. The next way you can add a button is inside of databases. So for that, you can do slash database. And let's say we have a table view and plus new database. And basically you can add buttons into any database right now. So we can just put like this sample database and click the plus sign here and search for button. And we can already add, for example, add task and we can even change the icon like this and now we have a button so the first way we wanted to show how to use buttons is the most basic thing to do with them and that is just simply to add blocks underneath so we're going to type slash button and we can add here for example daily to do and we can put an emoji here like a sun and when you click the button, what we wanted to do is add some pre-made blocks. So we're going to click insert blocks and insert blocks below or above button. And inside here, we're going to add a toggle. So we're going to type slash toggle, toggle list. And here we're going to type at today. So the date when it's duplicated and inside the toggle, we're going to add the to-do list. So we can type slash checkbox or to-do and simply duplicate this in like this and that's it so we can click done so whenever you click this button it's going to show at today and you can write your to-do list the next day you can click it again and it's going to add another one below it and so on so this could be a really easy way to just keep adding to-do lists if you really need it to or just any kind of thing you need or prompts or things like that you could put inside buttons like this inside a very basic block the next common use case for buttons is adding pages to databases. So for this, let's go ahead and create a sample database by typing slash database. And we're going to choose table view and plus new database. And we're going to just call this sample database. And let's say that here we want a button at the top to add a page inside here. So we can type slash button and put add page. And let's go ahead and put a plus sign. So when the button is clicked, we need to add an action. So we're going to click add action and we want to add page two. And we're going to select this sample database that we have here and we can choose the name. So for example, if you wanted all of your new entries to have the same name, you could just type sample entry, for example. And you can also edit other properties if you need to and done. So now what this does can just add a page add a page like this so this is another really easy way to use buttons and one more thing to note is if you want to actually open the page up after you click it you can also configure that so let's say that we want to add another step and that's to open the page so then you can go to select page new page added and then done so now when we add a page we actually see the page here as well opened up and you can click out so this is actually how we use buttons quite often inside of our pages that have databases. The next thing we wanted to show you is how we would add a button which changes a property inside of a database. So what you can actually do is type slash button and we're going to, for example, pretend that these are tasks that are going to go all into archive with the press of a button. Then you can go and click archive like this. And when the button is clicked, we want it to edit the pages inside sample database. And we want to edit all the pages. And the property that we're going to edit is going to be 
the tag. First, we have to set up the tag. So we're going to go ahead and add one called archive. So let's say that we want to change all of these into archive. Then we could go to edit a property tags and replace with, and now we can replace it with archive done. So then if we click button, then all of them have archive. So this could be useful if you have like a task database and you're showing maybe overdue items and you want with a click of a button to just change all of them into archive, you could actually set that up by checking here and you can even do a filter. So if something is overdue and then you could replace it with archive. The next thing we wanted to show is when you add a button inside of a database entry. So we can actually open up the sample entry and let's go ahead and add another tag, which is going to be called complete. So let's also put doing. So let's say that it's in doing and we want to add a button inside here and we're going to click here complete. So when the button is clicked, we're going to edit the page property so this one and we're going to set it to complete and done so edit this page and we're going to replace the tag with complete done so now maybe we type in here and we're done we could click complete and it's going to just automatically change it so this can also be a really useful way to add this button and you can even add that is a database template so let's say that we go to plus new template and this is going to be a new entry and inside here we wanted to add a button we can actually add complete button here add an action and change the tag to complete done so now let's say we open another sample entry we choose the new entry database template and we can just click complete to complete it the next thing that we wanted to show is the confirmation dialog. So let's say that before you archive everything, we wanted to actually have a confirmation dialog since that's a pretty big deal. So we can actually add another step and this is going to be show confirmation. So we can do, are you sure you want to archive everything? And then you can either continue or cancel. And these are also editable. So now we can click done. So let's say that we're going to change these all to archive again. It's going to ask, are you sure you want to archive everything and continue? And then it archives. Then the other thing is that, as you can already see, you can really attach multiple of these steps into one button. So let's say that when you do archive everything, you also have a communications board. So you can actually do something like create another database here, slash database. And let's say this is table view plus new database. And this one's going to be sample database two, and let's say that we want to add an item inside of this notifying about the archive situation so we can also already go ahead and maybe mark these as doing first and let's say that we're going to add another step here so we're going to add another step which is to add page two and we are going to Add the page to sample database number two, and it's going to be called all tasks are archived. So when this happens, if we walk through this, all pages that match this in sample database are going to be replaced with archive. Then it's going to show a confirmation message if you're OK with that. And then it's going to add a page into sample database two saying all tasks are archived. And we can even add another step, which is going to be to open that page that we just added, new page added in center peak. So let's see what happens when we click this button. So we're going to click archive and it's going to ask us, are you sure? We're going to say yes. And then it's going to send us to this page. All tasks are archived. And now we can see that in sample database two, we have this and here we have this. So. If you have two different databases that are in some ways connected each other that you have to add another page to the other database, this could be a useful way to just connect them all. So another way that we often use Notion's buttons is actually as a navigation system. So let's actually build a page called homepage by clicking slash page. And we're going to be calling this homepage. And inside home page, let's say we have a page that's called about us. 
and inside here we want to add a button that's going to return us to the home page so we're going to type slash button and we're going to call this return home and when the button is clicked we want to open the page in full page and this page is going to be called home page and we can just click this done so now if we click return home it's going to return to our home page if we go to about us it's going to go back here so this is a really handy way to move back and forth between pages and kind of make it feel like a web page so we use this quite often in our notion templates so the next thing we wanted to cover is the new database buttons so in this case we are going to be adding buttons inside of databases and the first use case we wanted to show you is a button that would mark your entry as done and also add a completion date. So for that, you can click plus here and we'll add a button. So that's very simple to add. And when the button is clicked, we are going to change the tag to complete. And we also want to show the completion date. So we're going to add another property, which is going to be the completion date so we're going to choose a date property and rename it completion date and we can even move the button over here so it's easier to see and we're going to edit this property so when the button is clicked edit this page replace with complete and we are going to edit another property which is the completion date and we're going to choose now so now let's try the button. We click it and it's going to complete and it added a completion date automatically. And we can also change the name of this so we can just call it complete. So like this, you can easily just check them off and add a completion date really quickly. Another great use case is when you need to add something as sort of an upvote system. So let's say that we're going to add here a person property and we're also going to add another field here which is going to calculate the number of person in there so we're going to go to formula and we're going to edit the formula so we're going to go person dot length done and we can call this upvotes so whenever someone adds themselves to the person property it's going to add this part as an upvote so what we can now do is add a button called upvote. So we're going to add a button property and this is going to be called upvote. And when the button is clicked, we want to change the person to the person who clicked the button. Done. It's going to add it as an upvote. So let's say that we want to upvote this entry. We could just click like this and it gets added as an upvote. So this is a way that we've also seen the Notion buttons used inside databases. And we think this is quite cool as well. Another way these buttons can be useful is when you want to add a page to a related database. So let's say that this one is actually going to be called tasks and this one is going to be called subtasks. And we're going to be adding a relation property by clicking the plus sign relation. And we're going to relate it to subtasks. And now we have subtasks here and tasks here. So Let's say that we want to add subtasks to a task. So we can actually make a button for that. So we can click the plus sign here, button, and we can call this add subtask. And when the button is clicked, we're going to add the action, which is to add the page to subtasks. And we want to edit the property, which is the tasks, and select this page. And we can even choose to open it up if we wish. But for now, we're just going to do something like this and we are going to try it out. So let's say that we want to add subtask to this sample entry. We can click add subtask and it appears here. We can add more like this as we need. So this is a really useful and easy way to add subtask to your main task entries. Another really cool way to use Notion's buttons is to add start and end times. So let's say that you might be creating like a Pomodoro tracker or something. You could click the plus sign here, click a button. And we actually need two date properties. So we're going to also add that. 
date and name this start date. We're going to name this start time and we can duplicate this one and we'll call this one end time and we'll have a button and this one is going to log your start time. So let's go ahead and edit this button, edit property. So when the button is clicked, the start time is going to be now for this page and we can rename this start and we can duplicate this property and we're going to call this one end and we're going to edit the property and when the button is clicked we're going to change the end time we're going to select now and now if we click start it's going to log this time when you click end it's going to log this time so how this can be useful is that you can then actually add a formula by clicking plus formula and you can change this so that you calculate the date so the date between and you can take the end time and you can take the start time and then you can add how you want to see it so in this case minutes and done so now let's try logging start and we'll log end so now we see that we spent one minute on this so this is another useful way to try notions buttons thank you so much for watching and we hope that this was useful for you all if you have any questions or comments feel free to let us know what is your favorite notion button use case we'd love to hear from you